Hi class, welcome, welcome. In this video, we are going to classify three dimensional figures. And your learning goal is, before we can classify three dimensional figures first, I have to teach you and you have to learn about the different types of three dimensional figures, which are known as polyhedrons and non-polyhedrons. Once we learn about those, then we can classify them based on their properties. So let's talk a little bit about two-dimensional versus three-dimensional. It's going to be a little bit of a review. Um, so far, we've spent a lot of time talking about polygons, which are two-dimensional shapes. So we've talked about more specifically, we've talked about um, just polygons in general. We've also talked about triangles and quadrilaterals. And we're going to now move on to talking about three-dimensional shapes. So. Um, Instead of a square, we're going to be talking about like a cube. And to remind you about what three dimension means, three dimensional means, uh, there's three dimensions, length, width, and height. And 2D shapes, like polygons, only use two out of the three dimensions. They use a combination. Either they have length and width, or length and height, or width and height, but they, they don't use all three. And then... 3D shapes, however, use all three dimensions. They have length and width and height. So again, um, here's an example with a rectangle. This rectangle has length. It has width. It doesn't have that third dimension, which is why it looks flat on the screen. It doesn't pop out at you. Um, a three-dimensional shape would have the length, the width, and the height. So here you can see this shape has the depth. It looks like it's, you can tell that it's three-dimensional. It's kind of sticks out at you. It has that depth. And um, just as another review, an example of 2D graphics versus 3D graphics. Here we have old school 8-bit Mario you know, from the original Super Mario Brothers. And he's made out of pixels and he's two-dimensional he's he's flat he has you know he has like that length and that height but he doesn't have the depth and then you have a 3d version of mario and um it doesn't look flat all right pop quiz what does the word poly mean okay you remembered poly means many and polygons mean many sides. Polygons are two-dimensional. Can you guess what the word is for a three-dimensional figure? All right, well, let's see how your guess was. Uh, if a polygon is two-dimensional, the word for a three-dimensional figure is polyhedrons. And just like polygon, the word polyhedron was also invented by our friends the ancient Greeks and poly means many hedron means faces so in other words polyhedron means many faces um, that's not actually what I meant by faces um, mathematically speaking when we talk about faces, faces are the sides of a 3D shape. So we're not talking about human faces. We mean something more like this. So if you can look here, um, this, the faces here, they've been highlighted in blue. Um, these shapes have more than one face, but they're pointing it out to you with the blue. And so the face is a word for the side. Here's some other examples. Okay. Um, so there's faces, there's edges, and then still we're still using vertices or ver you know vertex or a vertice. But a face is a word for side. And here's yet another example picture. Okay, so again, the faces are the sides of a 3D shape. All right, now that you've learned what polyhedron means. It's a 3D shape with many faces. Now we're going to classify some polyhedrons. And there are two special types of polyhedrons that we're really going to focus on in this video. There are prisms and there are pyramids. 
and you can see an example of them right there. And we will start with prisms first. So let's get started. So a prism has two congruent polygons that are used as bases and bases are like the ends. So if you look right here in this picture, the purple parts are the bases, they're the end parts. So um, every prism always has two bases. If you look at these pictures right here, you'll notice that these bases are congruent. They're both identical. They're both the same. And the shape of the base is used to name the prism. So if we look at those example prisms from the last slide, this is what we would name them. You have a triangular prism on the left because both bases are triangles. In the middle, we have a pentagonal prism because both bases are pentagons. And then on the right, we have a rectangular prism because the bases are both made out of rectangles. And then the parts that aren't highlighted, the white parts, those are the faces, right? Those are the sides. So a triangular prism is going to have three faces, right? It has three sides. A pentagonal prism would have how many faces? Well, it would have five. And then on this rectangular prism, it's going to have four faces because a rectangle is a quadrilateral. And here are just a few more pictures of different types of prisms here, um, just some different views. So um, at the top, we have another rectangular prism, right? And the ends are rectangles. And you might be going, wait, that doesn't look like, look like a rectangle to me. That looks like a square. Well, we have to remember that if we look at the definition of a rectangle, a square is also technically, it fits the definition of a rectangle. So you can have the ends be a square and still call it a rectangular prism. We also have another view of a, a pentagonal prism. We have a hexagonal prism and the base on that is yellow and at the other end, there's the other hexagonal base. They both have, they're, they're congruent. Um, and then we have another view of a triangular prism. So pop quiz, again, do you remember what the sides of a polyhedron are called? That's right, they're called faces. And for prisms, the faces or the sides, um, the sides of a prism, they're always made out of rectangles. So on the left side, we have another view of a pentagonal prism. The bases are polygons, but those faces, the sides, they're all made out of rectangles. And then we have a view of a triangular prism. And again, the two bases are triangles, congruent triangles, but then the sides of that prism, those are made out of rectangles. So just remember if for a prism, the sides are always made out of rectangles. It doesn't matter what shape the base is, the sides will always end up being rectangles. And here's some more examples just where you can kind of see like the faces are rectangles. So let's recap prisms really fast. Prisms are a special type of polyhedron. They have two congruent polygons as bases. And um, another way you might think of base, you might not think of the ends. It has two ends. The shape of the bases is how the prism is named. And then the faces or the sides of a prism are always made out of rectangles. All right, it's time to test your knowledge. What is the, what is this prism called? Okay. It is a triangular prism. How many faces does it have? And faces mean sides, so if you only look at the sides, you don't look at the triangle ends, then there are three faces. What is the name of this prism? It is a pentagonal prism. 
how many faces does a pentagonal prism have? And again, if you just look at the rectangles, the sides, and you you look th look at all those, um, there are five. And you might kind of notice that some of the lines are dashed. Those are sort of the invisible lines that kind of shows you um, what it would look like all the way around. What prism is this? What is its name? So if you look at the shape of the base, uh, you'll see a hexagon. So this is a hexagonal prism. It has six faces. What is the name of this prism? This is an octagonal prism. Uh, the shapes of the bases, if you count it, um, you can count one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. Um, you can count eight sides. That makes it an octagon. Uh, so it's an octagonal prism. It has eight faces. What about this one? This is called a rectangular prism because the ends are rectangles. Sometimes they might be even be squares and uh, it has four faces. And how about this one? This is a nonagonal prism because uh, the bases are nonagons. And since the bases are nonagons, how many uh, sides does it have? How many faces? That's correct, it has nine. And here is a picture of a triangular prism. What color is the base? That's right. The base is a triangle. So the color of the base in this uh, one, it is blue. Okay. And let's look at some real world examples of prisms. You might kind of think like, oh, you know, have I, can you think of any? Well, I got a couple. Um, there's a candy bar called a Toblerone and the box that it comes in is a what, what shape, what prism is the box? It is a triangular prism. Very good. And then, um, just a cereal box, any box really. I mean, if you've, a bo boxes are rectangular prisms. So this cereal box right here, it is a rectangular prism. The ends are rectangles. The sides are rectangles. Um, so pretty much any box that you that you've seen that you've seen before is a rectangular prism. There's tons more examples, but we'll just keep moving on. Um, now it's time for us to look at the other type of polyhedron, which is a pyramid. Pyramids. So pyramids and prisms are a little bit different. Unlike prisms, which have two bases, pyramids only have one base. In which case, it is the bottom of the pyramid. So there's just that one base and you'll notice up at the top, um, it goes up and meets at a point. So pyramids are pointy. Um, however, something that they do have in common with prisms, the base of a pyramid is a congruent polygon that we use to name the pyramid. So on the left, the base is a square. So that's called a square pyramid in the middle, the green one, the base is a triangle, which would make that a triangular pyramid. And then all the way over on the right, the base of the pyramid is in the shape of a hexagon, which would make, give that pyramid, it would be called a hexagonal pyramid. So the shapes of the base is used to name pyramids and prisms. So that is something they have in common. Um, another word for the vertex at the top of a pyramid, um, it's called an apex, and which is a word that means the highest point. So again, um, I'll just say it again for you. Uh, a pyramid only has one base and it meets up at the top at a point which can be called the apex. Another difference between prisms and pyramids is that the faces are different. The faces of a prism are rectangles, but the faces or the sides of a pyramid are always made out of triangles. So right here, here's a picture of a hexagonal 
pyramid and if you look at each of the faces here it has six faces each one is a triangle that meets up at the top at that apex so let's recap pyramids are another special type of polyhedron they have one congruent polygon as a base which is the bottom and pyramids end with a point this vertice is called the apex of the pyramid and the shape of the base is how the pyramid is named. And the faces or the sides of a pyramid are always made out of triangles. And something that I kind of tell myself to help me remember the difference between a prism and a pyramid is I always think for pyramids, I always think of triangles because the sides are triangles and pyramids because triangles are pointy, right? Um, so that kind of helps me remember that, hey, triangles are pointy. That means the sides of a pyramid are triangles. And it is time to test your knowledge again, this time with pyramids. Are you ready? All right, what is the name of this pyramid? How would you classify it? And if you look at the base, the shape of the base is a square, which means that this is a square pyramid. How many faces does a square pyramid have? Well, since the base is a square and a square is a quadrilateral that has four sides, a square pyramid also is going to have four faces. What is the name of this pyramid? Right, it's a triangular pyramid. The base is a triangle. And so it's gonna have three sides, three faces, and that are also made out of triangles. How about this fellow? What, how would you classify this pyramid? What's its name? Well, if you look at the base, it is a hexagon, which makes this a hexagonal pyramid. And here's some real world examples of pyramids. And this might be a word, you know, a lot of people already kind of know what a pyramid is thanks to the ancient Egyptians, which uh, here's, that's the most famous example, but over here on the left, um, that's a four-sided die. Um, the most common, you know, most people know when you buy a board game, it comes with dice that are cubes with six sides. Each dice has the numbers one through six, but there's other versions of dice too. Um, there is a four sided version like this. Um, and they come in the shape of a pyramid. And then uh, of course the picture on the right, we have the great pyramids of ancient Egypt built by the ancient Egyptians. And I don't need to say much more about those. So let's just kind of look at these two pictures here and just kind of, you can kind of see right away the difference between prisms and pyramids. Um, again, if you look at the prisms, they have two bases. The pyramids only have one base. Um, the sides of the prisms are rectangles. The sides of the pyramids are triangles. Um, the only thing that they do have in common is that they're both, they're both polyhedrons. They're both three dimensional shapes and they both get their names based on um, what polygon is used for the base. So you guys are doing good. Keep it up. We got a little bit more to go through. Hang in there. So now that we've talked about polyhedrons, we do need to spend a moment and talk about what are called non-polyhedrons. And here's some pictures of non-polyhedrons. Can you guess why these are not called why these are not considered to be polyhedrons? What is different between what you see right here and prisms and pyramids? What do you notice that's different? So non-polyhedrons have curved surfaces. You can see um, on these shapes, a lot of them have circles as bases or they're round and um, 
a circle is not a polygon. So any three-dimensional shape that has a circle in it is also a non-polyhedron. These are sort of special. It's a, a non-polyhedron is like a special category of three-dimensional shapes. So um, you have a cylinder. And a cylinder has two congruent circular bases and then one curved surface. And um, some an example of some cylinders that you see in real life would be um, cans, like soda cans or cylinders or soup cans. And then um, even like a battery is like in the shape of a cylinder. It's got the two round bases and then the curved surface that wraps all the way around. After cylinders, we have spheres. And a sphere is looks like that. And it's basically, it has no bases and it's just one round curved surface. And obviously um, some really common examples of spheres are uh, like a ball. Any type of ball basically is a sphere or even um, planet earth is, in the, is, is, is round and shaped like a sphere. And then after that you have cones and a cone has one circular base and the rest of it's curved and it does look like a pyramid some people sometimes call this a circular pyramid um it's not a pyramid a pyramid is a polyhedron and this is a non-polyhedron um and if it has curves on it it it, it cannot be classified as a polyhedron um even though it's sort of even though it's pointy at the top but it has one congruent circular base and one curved surface and some obvious examples of a cone would be like an ice cream cone or even like um, like birthday party hats. Sometimes there's hats like that that are shaped like cones. So those are your non-polyhedrons. So now let's circle back to the learning goal from the very beginning of the video and let's kind of reflect on that for a minute. So the goal at the start of the video that I shared was that we were going to learn about three-dimensional figures. We were going to learn about polyhedrons and non-polyhedrons. And then we were going to classify them based on their properties. So take a minute and kind of check in with yourself and say, okay, how, how am I feeling about this right now? Do I understand uh, what a polyhedron is? Do I understand what a non-polyhedron is? Can I name the non-polyhedrons? Do I know the differences between prisms and pyramids? Can I name them? Can I describe the faces? If you're feeling pretty good with that, that's awesome. If you're not feeling good, if you feel like I just overwhelmed you with all this information, that's sort of why I choose to do these lessons as videos, right? Because you can go back, you can pause this video, you can go back and rewatch it if you forgot something, if I went too fast or you're like, wait, I, I need to I need to hear that again. Well, that's why I created it like this for you so that you don't have to feel like, oh, Mr. Falstrom said it that one time in class and, I for, and now I don't know. So just kind of check in with yourself and go, okay, do I need to go back and watch or do I, or, or do I feel good? Um, if you're feeling good, I'm, we're going to do a couple more questions. So after this recap, we'll test your knowledge again. So non-polyhedrons are 3D figures that have curved surfaces. Polyhedrons are 3D figures that are made out of polygons. There are two special types of polyhedrons, prisms and pyramids. And prisms have two congruent poly polygons as the bases or the ends. The shape of the base is how the prism gets its name. And the faces or the sides of a prism are always rectangles. And then pyramids have one congruent polygon as a base or the bottom, and they end with a point, which is also called the apex. And the shape of the base is how the pyramid gets its name. And the faces or sides of a pyramid are always made out of triangles. All right. Now we're going to test your knowledge. So test your knowledge time. Okay, here's a fun fact. Um, did you know that a soccer ball is a polyhedron? And if you've ever looked at a soccer ball, maybe you haven't ever studied a soccer ball closely, uh, it's made out of hexagons and pentagons. The, uh, the black spots on the ball are pentagons, and the white panels 
are hexagons. So now you know. Good job today, and thanks for participating. And I'll see you again in the next video.